Hi, and welcome to lesson 10 here in our compounds unit. Lesson 10 is going to continue our investigations of the mathematical relationships in chemical formulas. We're gonna look at some math related specifically to empirical formulas, and that notion of a mole is going to come up again, not this kind of mole. So if you have any questions about moles, molar mass, percent composition, you probably wanna go back and rewatch lessons eight and nine in this unit before you tackle the material that's in this lesson. Let's go in. Remember that the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. This is always gonna be true for ionic compounds and network solids, what we call the formula unit of the compound. Also remember that molecular compounds can be stated as empirical formulas, but they don't have to be. Some are normally empirical, others aren't. It really depends upon the particular compound. With that in mind, we can determine the molecular formula from the empirical formula of a compound. What you need to understand in order to be able to do this is that the ratio of the empirical formula to the molecular formula is going to be equal to the ratio of the empirical formula's mass to the molecular formula's mass. Put it another way, the mass of the empirical formula unit times some number is going to be equal to the mass of the molecular formula. Similarly, the empirical formula times that same number is going to be equal to the molecular formula. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions that you have, particularly since this is not on your reference tables. And then let's go through a problem. This problem's on page 21 of your unit seven packet. The empirical formula of a compound is C2H3, and the molecular mass is 54.0 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula of the compound? I've rewritten the equivalencies that we just talked about. Pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. And then when you're ready, we'll go through the problem together. The first thing I'm gonna do is plug in the values that I have. The empirical formula is C2H3, and the molecular mass is 54.0 grams per mole. I've just plugged those into the equations. Can I figure out anything else in the equations based on the information I currently have? I absolutely can. I can figure out the mass of the empirical unit. If the empirical formula is C2H3, then its mass is going to be 27.0. Now that I know that, I should be able to figure out what N is. Dividing 54.0 by 27.0 gives me an N of two. Now that I know that N is two, I can bring that down to my C2H3 and distribute that out to get a molecular formula of C4H6. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions you have and then let's talk about a different kind of math that we can do. We can also figure out the empirical formula from percent composition data. To figure this out, we're gonna have to go from percent composition to what's called the mole ratio. And from the mole ratio, we can then figure out the empirical formula. It's not that hard to do. To go from percent composition to mole ratio, the first thing we would need to do is convert our information to masses. We would then need to divide by the molar mass. Once we have our mole ratio, we would need to divide that by the smallest value and then multiply that until every number was a whole number in order to get the empirical formula. It's important to understand that you may not have to do steps one and four, depending upon the specifics of the problem. Let's go in and take a look at one of these problems. This is on page 20 of your unit seven packet. A compound is found to have the following percent composition, 20.0% magnesium, 26.7% sulfur, and 53.3% oxygen. Can we figure out its empirical formula? Pause the video and try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So the first thing I need to do is convert to mass. Since I have percentage data, let's just assume I had 100 grams of the substance. If I have 100 grams of the substance, the percent composition data can easily be converted to masses just by turning them into grams. So I'm gonna have 20.0 grams of magnesium, 26.7 grams of sulfur, and 53.3 grams of oxygen. Now that I know that, I can figure out the mole ratio by dividing each of these by its molar mass. 20.0 grams divided by 24.3 grams per mole for magnesium, 26.7 grams of sulfur divided by 32.1 grams per mole for sulfur, and 53.3 grams for oxygen divided by 16.0 grams per mole for oxygen. Once I do that, I have my mole ratio. These substances are in a 0.82 to 0.83 to 3.33 mole ratio, magnesium to sulfur to oxygen. Step three requires me to divide by the smallest value that I've determined. The smallest value here is 0.82. I'm gonna divide each of these by 0.82, and that's gonna give me one magnesium, one sulfur, 
and four oxygens. If I had a number like 2.5 in here, I would then need to multiply everything by another number until everything was a whole number, but I don't have that here. Everything is already a whole number. And so my empirical formula for this compound is MgSO4. Does this make sense? If it doesn't, write down any questions that you have before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of empirical formula math. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can convert between a compound's molecular formula and its empirical formula. Also make sure that you can use an empirical formula and molecular mass to determine the molecular formula of a compound. And finally, make sure that you can use percent composition data to determine the empirical formula of a compound. If you can do all those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.